Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today I am here with a very special guest. I have been a fan of this man's channel ever since I came across his first video on YouTube. And I think I started watching Game of Thrones videos on YouTube probably back in the summertime. And his videos were some of the first ones I came across and really liked. And over time, after watching a lot of his videos, his channel is actually the main reason I started to make my own videos. So he's really been a big inspiration to me. So to actually have him on my channel is an honor and I can't wait to get into this discussion and get your perspective on some of these things that we're about to discuss. Uh, Chris, before we get started, is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? Oh man, appreciate it. Appreciate the, uh, the kind words and uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be here on Talking Thrones. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Okay, everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about Sansa and Arya, and we're pretty much going to give all of our predictions about where we're going to see these characters going in Season 7. So just to kind of start, I'll give a little backstory on where we saw these characters last, and Chris, I'll throw it to you and see what you think is going to happen to these two characters. Sounds good. The last time we saw Arya Stark, she was at the Twins. Now that's when she had the face of another woman, which she was wearing, that she used to pretty much stay undercover until the right opportunity so that she could kill as many Freys as possible, Walter Frey especially. So basically what I want to ask you is, at the beginning of Season 7, do you think Arya is still going to be there at the Twins and possibly killing some more Freys and freeing Edmure Tolly, Or do you think the first scene we'll get with her is her just traveling back up north? Yeah, I definitely think Arya's got some unfinished business to do uh, before she heads home. I mean, we know by the season seven filming, she will get to Winterfell at some point. But I think with her being in the Riverlands, I think she she still has to deal with uh, Edmure Tully, as you mentioned. And, uh, you know, you know, it, it brings into question the entire thing. You know, why go to Braavos and train as a faceless assassin? And, you know, the whole thing with her identity, the whole arc about her identity and not knowing who she is and, you know, we got confirmation. I think we both did videos on uh, the whole return of Nymeria and the Wolf Pack. For you know, uh, so definitely going to be some some drama there for a while. But as I've been saying the last few videos um, and some Q and As I did previously, definitely think she'll have to be kind of turned back to the path. Uh, uh, you know, of you know, family is more important and the uh, the real threat to come as far as White Walkers. You know, it's almost the uh, the standard tragedy story, right? With Arya, she's. She's really hard to predict because, you know, the Bravos thing, especially on the show, it's kind of complicated a bit. It's a little bit more going on in the books, and uh, it's kind of the, the classic tragedy where she's a good girl you're rooting for, but she's doing this really bad shit now, even though it's pretty much justified in my book. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, I think uh, I think we'll see her, uh, you know, and her list is shorter in the show for that matter, but I think she'll probably hang, hang out in the Riverlands, run into the Brotherhood Without Banners, uh, specifically the Hound again. I certainly hope to see that reunion before she heads back north. Yeah, I agree. Her, her story is very hard to predict. Like, I've been trying to think where she's going to end up, not just at the end of Season 7, but I've been trying to think about where she's going to end up at the end of Season 8. I'm trying to, like, actually visualize her on the battlefield because I'm not sure what else she would really do. We know she really doesn't want to become a lady and have a family. At least that's what she said back in Season 1. So I'm having trouble visualizing her actually becoming a wife and a mother or even on the battlefield fighting with all the men. Yeah, I agree. And that's what makes her so hard to predict and talk about is, you know, what is this game of her training to be a faceless assassin really mean, you know, in the books or the show? You know, what did she go there for? We know it was a, a story arc about her, her identity, her losing her identity. She started losing her identity very early on in the show and books. And, you know, now she's back. She did say last season, of course, a girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell and I'm going home, but she's going down this dark path and it makes you question, okay, first of all, how does she get her faces? You know, is she, did she take a few, you know, before she left or she have the skill now to kill people and take their faces? So we haven't really got that answer. You know, how does this fit into the end game? How does Nymeria and the wolf pack fit into the end game? Because as I mentioned in my, uh, Nymeria video, you know, they could have left Nymeria alone in the show, right? I mean, nothing like the books. You don't hear about the, the wolf pack in the riverlands as you do in the books and that type of thing. So they're bringing her back for a reason, but of course she's not a warg in the show. And, and I don't think they're going to introduce that at the last minute. That would be kind of insane. So, you know, that kind of plays into the end game a little bit. Is this thing going to be something where she simply goes on a killing spree, kind of gets talked back into understanding what's important by the hound or somebody like that, heads back up to find John and her family, or is this play into the end game where possibly 
she's the one that takes out the Night King in some ways since she's been trained to be an assassin. So it, br it brings up a lot of questions, and it's definitely one of the harder characters to predict. Yes, it certainly does bring up a lot of questions. And something you mentioned in there, I was actually going to ask you next. Do you think she's going to continue to use that same face? Or do you think she has more that she possibly took from the house of black and white? Or do you think she's going to collect more along the way up to Winterfell? Yeah, I, I would say that she's probably collecting them as she goes. I mean, I don't really know the answer to that. I would just think that, you know, I'm sure they're preserved well in the house of black and white. So maybe she did take a handful but I'm just thinking she may actually be collecting those on the way. And uh, anybody, you know, I guess she's going to probably take out anybody, you know, that's involved with the phrase, kind of like the Lady Stoneheart arc from the books. And uh, so they don't necessarily have to be on her list. You know, like that serving girl she played uh, to kill Walter Frey. We have no idea who that is and uh, where that face came from. So you, you got to assume that pro perhaps she's just a, a, was a Frey uh, of some sort, a serving girl or a wife to somebody or whatever. And never really explicitly said who that was and how she got it. So I'm guessing, just, just just my opinion, that she's probably getting the faces as she goes because we did see her learn that skill in the House of Black and White. Yeah, I was wondering if she actually got that face from the House of Black and White because at the end of Season 6, when they showed the shot of the wife's face added to the wall, I'm assuming she took that face and put the wife's face up there. Yeah, that's true. That's certainly a possibility. So it could be that we see the same uh, the same girl, you know, slip back into uh, that face again. And that's certainly a possibility. The question was, was that was that spot open that she put the waist face on or was it just, you know, did she swap it like you said? So that's a, that's certainly a good question. Yeah, I have a feeling she probably just swapped it out, but I, I'm not really sure exactly like you said. And um, at least on the show, for uh, example, you know, it would be a lot easier for them for her to have just one face as well. So that may make sense, at least in the show. Yeah, absolutely right. What do you think about Jag and Hagar? Like the way he just kind of let her leave. Do you think we're going to see him come back at all? You know, honestly, in the show, I don't. You know, obviously in the books, he's got a bigger role to play. You know, he's uh, snooping around the Citadel right now and tied in with that storyline. In the show, I honestly don't think we are going to see him again. It, it was almost like, uh, she went over there and the whole thing was a test from the get go. And she just became a service, you know, a, a, you know, basically starts to serve the quote unquote mini face God. Uh, and, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I don't believe there are actually any gods, but he certainly does. And um, so, you know, he, he said many times, it doesn't matter either way, a face will be added to the hall. So basically he just gave her the tools she needed to take out the people that, you know, she had on her list in the first place is the way I looked at it. And, uh, the whole damn thing was a test and uh, including the waif and the, the waif lost that test. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, apparently we didn't see that. Of course, it was in the dark. But uh, so that was one thing that kind of bothered me last season was the whole candle scene. I appreciate what they did with the whole blind Aria thing. But you got to think the waif had that training, too. So I don't think Aria would have had an advantage there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. You'd think the waif would have been able to fight in the dark as well. Right, exactly. Because in the books, especially, which is, of course, what they're pulling from, you know, they this was not a punishment. It was part of their training. So you would think she had the same training. I agree with that. OK, uh, the last time we saw Sansa, she was sitting next to Jon Snow as he was being proclaimed king in the north. Littlefinger and Sansa both exchanged that kind of like a look of concern. Do you think anything is going to come out of that, that look they exchanged? Yeah, uh, they definitely, they're definitely going to, uh, you know, they don't waste a lot of scenes in the show, regardless of what some people think of the showrunners. Uh, you know, they don't waste a lot of scenes and dialogue. So, th yeah, there's definitely going to be some drama there. I don't think it's going to be over the top like a lot of people think, you know, with uh, between Sansa and John. But there's definitely going to be some drama for a while. Littlefinger's continuing his game. And even though Sansa has already said, basically, who, you know, I'd be a fool to trust Littlefinger when her and John had that conversation. Even though the, even though she acknowledged that and they had that conversation, which almost you know could have really ended that right there. Of course, what he said got to her. You know, the gods would. He said, you know, who's going? Who are people going to support? You know, the the true daughter of Ned Stark or some bastard? You know, born in the south. So she undermined. You know, he undermined that again. You know, her confidence with with John and uh, there's there's going to be some drama for sure. It's not going to be just clean. And you know, that's the thing. He's going to take off, go south. You know, Danny's going to arrive, I'm, I'm assuming, and send, and send out ravens to all the lords. And that would include John being king in the north. So she's going to get a little taste of what it is to rule there for a while. And uh, we'll see if she likes it after all. 
Yeah, absolutely. I th- have a feeling as soon as John leaves for Dragonstone, that's when Littlefinger's going to begin his game again and start putting more stuff in Sansa's head to try to get her to, to continue to turn against John. Exactly. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to continue to play that game, and that will bring in later on. You know, we're talking about Arya, of course, too. That'll bring in Arya and Bran to the whole picture, too, as far as, you know, realizing what the hell he's actually doing. Even though he's basically told Sansa, and that's where he fucked up. You know, he gave away his game. He told Sansa his end game. Do you think Sansa's going to stay at Winterfell for the entire season? I would imagine she would. Um, I could see her, in, in a sense, maybe heading back to the Vale at some point if we bring Sweet Robin back into it. And depending on you know the the amount of drama between Littlefinger and her and what he stirs up, I could see her possibly going there. But at this point, I really don't see her leaving um, unless it is the Vale. You know, with something to do with Sweet Robin or some kind of marriage arrangement or whatever, because. Although she's aware of the problem with John, right, and the White Walkers and the real threat, she's aware of all that. She still, she still got a little bit of this, you know, kind of uh, Cersei in her a little bit, where she wants to be queen so bad, you know, and she's and and that's what Littlefinger is kind of bringing out in her. Although she was, she was starting to kind of go back to uh, caring about that type of thing, and family was more important. But you know, Littlefinger again has kind of twisted the the series, so. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. Littlefinger is probably the best manipulator in the show, and Sans is kind of like one of those characters who has been easily manipulated. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword for her. Sansa is is the the kind of the Stark you love to hate at times. You know, in the very beginning, she was very much a brat. You know, I want to be queen. That's all that matters in the world. And then she went through her, you know, the stuff she did with Joffrey and especially Ramsay, and you felt horrible for it. She certainly didn't deserve that. But now Littlefinger's with her his manipulation is kind of bringing that back out of her, almost a uh, a Cersei esque type character, right? You know, she she still got this little lust for power, even though she knows the real problem, the real threat to come from the North as far as the White Walkers. So it's uh like I said, Arya and Sansa, they're they're two people that it's it's hard to predict those type of things because they're not, you know, but they very much play a role in the end game. I think so. Uh, it's uh, it's hard to say, but definitely going to be some drama. Absolutely right. I'm kind of hoping Sansa does take some action in season seven and tries to take control of the Vale army one way or another, whether that's getting rid of Littlefinger completely or talking to Sweet Robin and getting him into the fold, getting him to support John himself instead of having Littlefinger make all the decisions. Yeah, I agree. And I do think that, you know, is going to come down to I do think Littlefinger to, to make a little prediction here. I think he's got to go in season seven, you know, at least by the end of season seven. I, I mean, uh, she's, and, and that's what I was saying. If I see her leaving Winterfell at all, I think it is going to be to back to the veil, perhaps, or whatever, to take control of that. There's certainly something there with Robin. You know, they had them together in previous scenes and previous seasons. So if she, if, if she does leave Winterfell, it's definitely going to be a political mo- maneuver to, to probably head to the veil and, uh, re- re- pretty much take control of, of, uh, of, uh, little Robin. So we know John definitely needs the veil forces for when, uh, the White Walkers actually do come marching down south. Yeah, he's going to get everybody he possibly can, and he'll reach out to his enemies, the Lannisters included. So I'm sure we'll see that as well. Oh, you think so? He's going to reach out to the Lannisters. Yeah, I, I don't think that. Uh, I, I don't think that John is going to be this. You know, he's the he's the um, the figure, right? He's the prince that was promised or Azor Ahai in the sense that. Not like I said, I've said in many, many videos on my channel. I do not believe in a literal flaming sword. I think that's all metaphorical. But you know, he's trying to do the right thing, and he knows that the right thing is to save the realm. And uh, I think he would even try to reach out to to the queen in King's Landing now, so to speak. You know, if he had to make them understand. And I think the, we've got you know some uh, filming news and, and plot leaks, of course, uh, that you've talked about on your channel. I think and. Uh, I think that kind of leads that direction where they're going to have this this meeting, and uh, I think that's probably part of it. Yeah, that's a very good point. We could see John try to reach out to them at that big parlay scene at the end of season seven, if that is in fact true. Yeah, we might see that. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's his main focus. I don't he he doesn't care about being king in the north. I mean he's always wanted that, especially in the book. You know, he dreamed of being a Stark and bring dreamed of being the Lord of Winterfell and that type of thing, and. Uh, but anyway, you know, with this with this new threat, you know, that's all he cares about. And it was pretty much foreshadowed with the wildlings. You know, that's what he wanted to do. He went to the enemy, so to speak, which was really just, you know, a different group of people that lived on you know the wrong side of the wall, so to speak, and uh, and got them down there and he got killed for it. So uh, I think he'll continue that type of uh, 
you know, reaching out to people regardless. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That's that's interesting to think about. It's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around John and Cersei ever having a civil conversation, but I'm wondering if it's actually true with what the leaks has said Cersei's response is actually going to be. I'm wondering if she's really going to turn her back to the threat like that. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know about the leaks, but you know, just my guess, you know, I think Cersei can have a dialogue with him. Do I believe she actually cares? No, absolutely not. She'll she'll try to screw somebody over. Every plan she's ever made goes to shit. She'll try something else. I'm assuming it's going to be another another wildfire trick, you know, with um, the Red Keep perhaps this time. Uh, and we'll get into that when we talk about, you know, the whole uh, Danny versus Cersei thing on, on my channel. But uh, anyway, I think she'll listen or at least pretend to listen. But I can't see her actually giving a damn. You're, you're probably right. And I agree with that. Okay, uh, to touch back on Arya, I have a feeling Arya is going to run into several characters on her way back to Winterfell. I think she's going to see Melisandre again and possibly even the Hound on her way home. Plus, it's looking like we may see Nymeria again too, which I have felt we would for a long time now, which I've said in several previous videos. Do you think Arya will run into anyone along the way, and what could you see happening if so? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I do think she's going to run into Melisandre. We, we saw, I believe, in you know a previous season, you know, we will meet again for Melisandre. And, uh, you know, she told us she was going to shut you know, all these eyes forever. And I think that, uh, you know, I don't – not to necessarily predict Melisandre's death, but uh, I think if that happens in Season 7, it's probably going to be Arya. Um, she is going to – before she gets turned back to the important things like her family and the war to come when she finds out the truth – I think she could very well run to Melisandre and hear about John from her before she kills her, if she does at all. So I definitely think she runs into Melisandre again and uh, the Hound for sure. And the Brotherhood, because uh, she may take a little bit of the Lady Stoneheart thing, but the, you know, they're going to basically be the ones to say, look, uh, we're heading North. Here's what's really going on. And Melisandre could be the actual person to say, your brother's back in Winterfell with your sister. Uh, you need to head up there. There's something more important going on. So definitely. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was trying to think of a way Melisandre could avoid being killed by Arya if they do confront each other. And I'm wondering, would Melisandre know that Arya is related to Jon? Yeah, I, I, it's hard to say. Uh, now, she could she could kind of avoid that by taking off her little uh, her brooch <laughs> and, uh, and stop <laughs> taking her potions. You know, that's certainly a way she can sneak around as a so-called faceless man, too, right? So... Um, you know, but I don't, I think, think Melisandre though, when it comes down to her, you know, she's mentioned several times, she's very, very old, right? We found that out. Obviously that got confirmed last season. Uh, you know, she's ready to die. She's carrying the world on her shoulders. You know, she's done some bad things, but she really honestly believes that everything's on her shoulders. And, and this is the way it is in the books as well. She honestly believes she's doing the right thing when she burns these people alive for the greater good, so to speak. So uh, I could see, I can almost see a scene where, you know, she gets, you know, stabbed or shanked or something by Arya and in her dying breath, she tells Arya the truth about John being home and the, the wars to come and all that. So I could see something like that going down actually. Yeah. It'd be pretty damn cool too, to see actually. I believe, I don't remember the description of the book so well, but you know, she said, uh, in her scene, you know, green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes, that's going to shut forever. I believe Melisandre has blue eyes, right? <laughs> so. I'm not sure. I, I know Cersei has green eyes, but I can't remember everybody's eye color, to be honest right, with you. Yeah. I'm not too sure. A big, that's a big thing in the books, you know, and that's uh, one of George R. R. Martin's problems. He can't remember the eye colors he describes in previous chapters. So <laughs> that's why he has Elio and, yeah. and Linda, right? So. <laughs> yeah, the only reason why I even remember Cersei's is because they would say it sometimes it would look like wildfire. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you, but you, but then again, talking about the show, you can't go by looks because they completely miss. You know, they didn't really worry about the details of everybody there, obviously. So you can't go by character descriptions in the show as far as the the end game. So, yep, absolutely right. What are your thoughts on a Stark reunion next season? Do you think we will see Arya, Sansa, Bran, and Jon all together at Winterfell at the same time next season? Yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit of a bittersweet thing in and of itself. I do think we'll see Sansa, uh, Bran, and Arya, but I don't think John's going to be there. I think he's going to leave probably right before they, you know, show up. So, you know, John's going to take off, go see Danny in the south, and head to Dragonstone. I'm assuming, uh, based off you know filming news and things like that. 
So I think he leaves and leaves Sansa, you know, basically Lady of Winterfell before he takes off. And then, of course, Bran will show up after John leaves, only to leave us hanging, you know, because he wants to tell John th the truth. Uh, of course, that brings into question Hall and Reed and all that stuff. But the point being, yeah, I think it's going to be where they kind of just miss John because they've done this so many times, especially with Bran in previous seasons. You know, he's been right there. He's He's been right there within – 15, 20 yards of him, you know, two times now and never saw him, you know, face to face, never knew he was there. So I think that'll probably happen again, although we will see a, a little reunion with Bran, Arya and uh, and Sansa. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think they're going to tease the reunion between John and Bran pretty much the entire season. We probably won't get that reveal of Bran telling John what he's seen and probably until season eight. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably the way it's going to go down. And, of course, I've questioned that, too, and I actually thought about a separate little video on that as well is, you know, this bittersweet thing. Will John ever find out? You know, but I think he will. But, uh, you know, it's just certainly a question. I, I could certainly see that happening. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen this season. And plus, you know, that, that brings in the question, Hal and Reed. You know, they did introduce him on the show in the Tower Joy flashback. Obviously, he's going to be very important in the books. We've heard from George R. R. Martin himself that he will be back. So, uh yeah, I don't think it's going to happen this season either. I would like to, at least at the end, maybe, possibly, because that maybe set up the end game. Maybe he has to find out what he has to actually do, and, and that has to do with his uh, lineage. So I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, I sure would like it to. <laughs> so. Yeah, you actually just kind of broke my heart there for a second when you said John may never find out about his parents. I thought, yeah, oh, I God, mean, please don't do that to us. Please yeah, don't do that would, to us. would that not be bittersweet more than just a few people dying? I mean, seriously. Oh, man, for him to never find out something that big, if they would tease that for the entire series, oh, my God. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, like I said, that's the reason I think he probably will find out. But at the same time, you know, all this build up in the books from, from the very first chapters in the first book of Game of Thrones and the TV show, obviously, with the, with the hints, we found out, you know, as the audience, as the viewer, you know, but then John never finds out in the actual story. Wouldn't that be fucking bittersweet? <laughs> oh, that, that would absolutely suck. I would hate that. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. Now with Sansa, do you think she's actually going to get married in season seven? Because I've been seeing some theories and videos going around. There were people actually believe that Sansa is going to marry Littlefinger in season seven. Do you think she's not only going to marry him, but anybody next season? Uh, I, I don't see that, actually. I, I see her, you know, possibly thinking about it, you know, because she is, like I said, she, you know, Littlefinger's got her back on this queen kick again. And uh, I, I think she'll, she certainly would consider that, but I don't think she'll actually do it. If anything, if you want my, you know, my personal, it's kind of a want more than a prediction, but if you want my personal prediction for the end game of Sansa, I see her and Tyrion get back together at some point. <laughs> I could see that too, honestly, and you I wouldn't I mean? mind that at all. I wouldn't mind that. You know, I could see at the end of this thing, you know, Tyrion sitting there with the very few people that are going to be left because it's going to be a lot of carnage. There's going to be a lot of people gone that we love on the show and in the books for that matter. I could see him sitting there sipping Imp's Delight, right, with his wife Sansa. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. I agree. I think Tyrion's going to play a major role in the end game when it comes to rebuilding basically Westeros and humanity. I think he's going to be one of the key figures in doing yeah. that. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I, I could see um, I could see that happening, you know, because, you know, she learned that Tyrion was not a horrible person regardless of his last name. And, of course, her and Marjorie, their conversations in King's Landing. And, you know, she definitely respected Tyrion. Uh, for not, you know, consummating the marriage and all that kind of stuff. And and so I, I could see that where she because, you know, her whole thing this whole time has been, you know, having this perfect prince. Right. You know, to marry this perfect prince, whether that was Joffrey or Loris or whatever. And then to marry an imp would just be a fitting end to that story. You know what I mean? And Marjorie also let Sansa know that big things come in small packages. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I think that's a possibility, actually, is those conversations. Yeah, I could absolutely see that going down. And if she had to marry anybody, that's who I would want it to be. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree to 100%. Okay, now, if Littlefinger is still at Winterfell when Arya arrives, what kind of problems do you foresee, considering Arya knows that Littlefinger was in cahoots with Tywin? Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen, I think, is, you know, Arya kind of knows the the deal with with uh, his backstory. You know, nobody really knows that N he was the one to betray Ned and literally hold a knife to his throat. Arya was there with Tywin. Arya was there when Littlefinger came in and tried to hide herself because he would recognize her. 
So he knows, and that's what's going to change Sansa's mind about this thing again, you know, kind of get her back on the right track. So she's been pulled in so many different directions. It's not going to be an easy, like, okay, yeah, I believe you right up front, but that's that's going to be part of the drama and getting her back on to understand that he's just using you, he's using your name, you know, he's he's told you your end game now, you know, his end game now. So uh, I think that's definitely part of it is Arya telling Sansa, look, this is what he actually did, and, you know, she had no idea. Yeah, and as much as I love Littlefinger's character, like I can't wait to see for that day to actually come and him to finally face the music for all the things that he has done. Exactly, and I could see that going down in many ways. We you know whether that's Brienne or whether that's Arya herself. You know, um, I, I I would like to. I think I said in a Q and A that I did on on my channel. I would like to see Littlefinger go out the fucking window in the old tower. <laughs> yeah, I remember you I saying mean, that uh, on your channel. I yeah, do I mean, that. I think uh, you know. A lot, yeah, Jamie would be, you know, I like Jamie. I don't want him to die, uh, but uh, so people could say, you know, it would be fitting for him to go out that at the end or something like that as far as even though he's been redeemed in, in sort of a way and he probably will be even more before he dies if he does. But uh, Littlefinger started all this shit. You know, Littlefinger basically got all this started. People acted on it. Like I said many times, Catelyn, you know, acted on this whole thing with a dagger without any real proof, but it was all his setup, you know, so I could see that being poetic justice, him going flying out the damn window just like Bran did. So. Yeah, it's definitely Littlefinger's fault that Ned even ended up in King's Landing in the first place with him plotting to kill Jon Arryn. Exactly. I mean, that was the whole setup in the first place, killing Jon Arryn to get Ned up there so they could uh, start a war between the, uh, the lions and the wolves. Absolutely right. What else do you see Arya doing next season? I feel like she's going to go home, obviously, but I don't see her staying there for the entire time. She definitely wants to see her family again, but she isn't going to just sit around and be a Susie Q homemaker. So what kind of a role can she actually play with all the upcoming wars on the horizon? Yeah, I think that would be, you know, and I don't know, like I said, you, you may know more than me if you've done some some supposed script leak stuff and all that, but I would I would think that she would, the majority of the t season, she would be in the Riverlands heading north or whatever, you know, meeting up with the Brotherhood, uh, the Hound, you know, finishing her her issue with the phrase, perhaps dealing with Edmure Tully in the Riverlands, all that good stuff. So I would think it would be more of an end of the season or close to the end of the season thing when she gets to Winterfell. But then she, of course, gets tied up in the, the, the Sansa Littlefinger drama. So I, I, that's honestly what I see her doing this season is is kind of almost a half and half type thing, if you want to say that. So, you know, half of her story is, is the Riverlands plot lines. there, kind of wrapping that stuff up and then her getting home. And, you know, we got the, the, the looming war for the dawn, right. With John and everybody trying to rally the realm, but kind of finishing off the political shit with little finger. So. Yeah, I can't, I can't actually see that because it's so hard for me to picture seeing Arya just kind of sit around at Winterfell. So it would make much more sense for her to be traveling to Winterfell for most of the season and getting all those reunions with the Hound right. and Melisandre and things like right. that. Exactly. Exactly. Do you think any of the uh, Stark sisters are going to kill any main characters next season? Do you think Arya is going to kill anybody else on her hit list other than Melisandre? Well, really, in the show, you know, she only really has Melisandre and Cersei left. She's basically taking the Hound off, right? I mean, um, I guess, you know, Sir Ellen Payne is still on there. But what I'm saying is, as far as uh, the scene was with her and the Wave, when they were still doing the training, she only named two people then, you know, and she had, like, forgotten half her list, even though half of them had been killed, you know, in other ways. So, I, I you know... I would like to see her certainly take out, like, you know, for the whole Valencar thing, right? But that wasn't really in the show either. So it could be anybody that kills Cersei in the show. Um, so that's certainly a possibility that her, you know, she wants to head to King's Landing before she meets up with the Brotherhood or the Hound or whatever, and she decides to go to Winterfell instead. So, you know, that may be a season eight thing or whatever. But um, if anybody, I definitely think Littlefinger, you know, like we just talked about, I think she could be the one to do him in, you know, maybe, uh, uh, using her skills when she does get back to Winterfell after she gets involved with the drama with Littlefinger and, and Sansa. And uh, she may decide for Sansa that, you know, he needs to be taken out. So <laughs> if anybody, I would say, I would say Melisandre, perhaps Littlefinger, as far as the Stark, uh, Stark kill, so to speak. Sansa, um, you know, she's not going to swing the sword herself, but I could definitely see her, you know, with the Littlefinger, that would be the other option with him, you know, ordering his death via Brienne or something like that. So. 
Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, got to start to play the game, right? She's got to start playing this game. She's been teasing this for two seasons now but about becoming Dar Sansa, so uh, she needs to actually do it. Yeah, they can't keep knocking her character back. Like, she needs to continue to rise. Exactly, exactly. Otherwise, just kill her off, right? I mean, Yeah, then what's the point of having her around? Exactly. There's something else I want to ask you. I have one more question, but since we was just talking about Arya's hit list, I actually just thought of something. Um, I've seen a lot of things go around on the internet talking about how Arya could potentially kill Cersei, and I've seen people say she could possibly wear Jamie's face. Now, is it con confirmed that when she wears somebody's face, she actually takes on their size too, like their body shape? No, that's one thing that's really still a mystery. We had just talked about this in a Q&A, as a matter of fact, on my channel where somebody had asked that very question. From my understanding, and I don't know the really specific details, and I don't remember if I read this in the World of Ice and Fire. This was a long time ago, but there seems to be different levels to the uh, the magic involved with faceless men. You know, you have the regular, you know, kind of a glamour type magic, right? Kind of like Melisandre where, you know, you use some object like a, a ruby perhaps to glamour yourself, but it really only works on certain people for a certain amount of time or something like that. And then a level two, so to speak, was the, the actual face, you know, the actual basically a mask. And then perhaps there's a third level where they can change the bone structure or get taller or shorter. I don't necessarily buy that, but we really don't know. I think that's the thing that's, that's you know, that's the thing that needs to be explained on how that works. You know, if, if she, for example, takes, uh, you know, somebody's face at, at River, let's say, uh, for example, she takes Walter Frey's face. I mean, is she going to all of a sudden become taller and fatter? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was exactly my point because yeah, with I mean, with her wearing Jamie's face, I don't know Jamie's exact height, but he looks like he's over six foot tall. So how would she pull that off? Yeah, exactly. And that's the question. We really just don't know. We don't know. I mean, at least to my knowledge, I don't know of how this actually works, and I don't think it's really explained that well in the books. Um, I'm not even sure where I remember hearing about the three different levels so, uh, from, honestly. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's hard to say. I, I can't see. I can't see. But, of course, they do take the bone structure in the face. So, you know, magic's magic. You know, they can explain anything with that. So, by just calling it magic. So, you know, however they do it, you know, I don't know. I don't. But there's really no clear-cut answers as far as I'm aware of, of how this magic works and does she get taller. You know what I mean? I'd, for example, could she take the, the face of the mountain? I'm right. I mean, that would be an extreme. She's very short. He's very tall. That would be too odd. Uh, even if he had the, she had the face, that'd be pretty damn obvious that it was, a, <laughs> that yeah. it, he, wasn't, that he wasn't quite tall enough. So <laughs> right. I don't think that, I don't think that's going to work that well. I think it's for short little stints to infiltrate something, you know, that type of thing. That's really all I can see it working as. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't think she would be taken on the size of the person either. I think she pretty much has to take the face of somebody that has a similar build to her. Right, right. To be effective anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of Walter Frey, did you see that he was recast for season seven? I, I did. I did hear that. And uh, I, I I think it's got to be a, a funeral scene, right? Or some kind of funeral scene. I mean, really, that's like, what I, just like Tywin did, you know? That's exactly what I was going to say, because some people have thought that she may be using his face. And I think it's exactly going to be what you just said. It's just going to be a funeral scene or maybe even somebody discovering his body in the little dining hall. Right. Exactly. So could, we may not even see a funeral scene because by the time she gets done there, you know, it, <laughs> at the twins, there may not be anybody to give him a funeral. So yeah, it could be something where he's just found laying there over the table. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I think it is. I don't think she's going to be wearing his face. Yeah. Yeah, I, doubt I, I don't, it. I don't think so either. I think you're right. Okay, so one last question, and pretty much the biggest question I want to ask you before we end this video. Will either one of the Stark sisters die during Season 7? Do you see Sansa or Arya dying this season? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think, if, uh, I think we may have to lose one more Stark before this thing ends, at least one more Stark. And I could make cases for anybody, really, honestly, Bran, Sansa, or Arya. But I, I don't think this season we will. Um, if I had to, if I had to choose, I mean, I think, I think Arya's got the bigger end game role. Obviously, John does, and obviously, Bran does. So I would think if anybody could be, you know, killed off, it would be Sansa if that has to happen. I don't think it happens in season seven, but I, I think that's certainly a possibility, although slim.
Yeah, I completely agree. I don't think they're going to kill any one of them off just yet. It kind of feels like all the Starks are going to be around until at least season eight. And if any of them more do die, it's probably going to be in one of the last episodes, either episode five or six in season eight. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, Chris. Well, I think we pretty much covered all the main things that these characters are going to be going through next season. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to say about them before we sign off, feel free. No, I think that's it. I think we covered quite a bit here. I think we've been going on for now a little over almost 40 minutes here. So yeah, uh, I think we, uh, I think we had a few good points there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming on. I really enjoyed this discussion. I hope everybody listening enjoys this as well. If you guys aren't subscribed to Chris's channel smoke screen yet, please go over and do that. He has a ton of content hours and hours of stuff you guys can listen to. I've pretty much watched all of his videos, so I know if you guys are anything like me, which you all seem to like the same Game of Thrones related material as I do, you're going to love all his videos too. So definitely go over to his channel and check all his stuff out. And Chris, I appreciate you for being here. I had a great time talking about these two characters with you, and hopefully in the future we can do this again. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, man. I enjoyed it. I always uh, love talking Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire. Regardless, I could talk all night about it. So uh, thanks for having me, man. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. And one last thing. Me and Chris are also going to record another video after this. It's going to be a Danny vs. Cersei video. So as soon as you see this video up, more than likely he's going to have his up too. So head over onto his channel and definitely check out that video that we're going to make about Danny vs. Cersei. Yep, we'll uh, we'll do that next, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll try to release these. I believe at the same time as what we had planned. So uh, yeah, definitely check that out, and maybe a two parter. I don't know. We we'll have to see how how long we talk about that, but uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely have that up and at the same time. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yes, sir, uh, Chris. Thanks for being here, and everybody else. I will see you guys down in the comment section. Bye. <laughs>